Hi guys. So, a few weeks ago, I reacted. Well, last week. I reacted to a little analog horror called Greylock. And that opened me to another analog horror titled Vita Carnis. We'll be watching that, the whole thing, today. So, I got my Guinness with me. Before we start this video, please go check out Vita Carnis if you haven't seen it yet. It, the link to the channel will be in the description below. Check it out before you watch this video. I say we jump right into it. I love me a good analog horror, but let's get to it. Flashing lights, gore, violence, death. Federal law provides severe civil. Today, the time this video comes out, it's not my birthday anymore, but it was yesterday. On planet Earth, life has thrived for millions of years. As it. Creatures big and small have found ways to adapt and evolve to flourish in all types of environments. From barren wastes to lush forests, life can be found. Earth has homed these creatures since the dawn of life itself. Only until very recently, things have changed. New life forms have appeared all around the globe and completely changing the balance of nature and what we know about evolution itself. That is why we, at National Living Meat Research, have been studying these new species, trying to help educate everyone about these creatures and their wondrous ways of life. Okay, so... First, what creatures. are these new life forms? What are they? Since their explosive arrival across the globe in 1931, there has been much debate on what these newcomers are, and where they came from. Are oh, they extraterrestrials more? coming to invade Earth? Or are they demons who come from hell to purge humanity? From what our scientists have discovered, no. The origins of these creatures are solely to Earth, miraculously out of nowhere. We don't know why or how, but one thing is for certain, Earth is now their home. What these creatures are is mysterious and still not well known today. But here is what we do know. These creatures are comprised mainly of muscle tissue, organs, and bones. So they no greatly skin? resemble animals with no skin, okay. or store-bought meat. Because of these That's characteristics, disgusting. they have been named accordingly as Vita Carnies. The carny species consume decaying, organic matter, but their main diet is composed of raw meat, not including their carnies' relatives. The uh. carnies only appear in places where there is an abundance of crawl, which leads to the first creature of the carnies' species, the crawl. The crawl. The crawl is a okay. growth of meaty tendrils that closely resemble the small intestine, the only difference being the dark red coloration. These tendrils grow in a similar pattern as vines, mold, or fungi. A primary stem structure is the host Ew. of divisions of other, smaller branches, and each tendril contains a variety of veins, arteries, and other similar organs used to transport nutrients absorbed from its surroundings. The ends of these tendrils are equipped with organelles used to absorb water, and organic matter necessary for growth. The source of these organic materials is mainly found in dirt and soil on surrounding surfaces. Using its root-like tendrils, it absorbs the material and processes it into usable energy. Although, the crawl also obtains energy through another means. What? Using a sophisticated form of photosynthesis, the dark pigmentation of the smaller branches is ideal for absorbing sunlight, and therefore allowing solar energy to fuel the crawl's growth. Because of its efficiency, it thrives in almost all types of environments, easily allowing it to spread across the world, and can be found pretty much anywhere. Its recent inclusion in the ecosystem has caused many major changes in nature's balance. Uh. One may assume that the crawl's presence may outcompete any other competitors, but due to its unique life cycle, know. where old branches fall off and decay into nutrient-rich compost, all forms of life seemingly flourish instead. Uh. The crawl's abundance grants plenty of nourishment to all animals, from plants feeding on the decayed crawl, herbivores thriving on increased plant population, and carnivores feeding on both the abundant prey 
and are able to eat the crawl as well. The presence of all these animals leave behind waste, which will be broken down and consumed by the crawl, and the cycle begins again. This form of symbiosis leads to an environment where all populations thrive. Humanity also uses the crawl to our advantage. Really? Because of the supernatural rate of growth and its richness in nutrients, what? it has been Was sustainably that? cultivated into domestic farms. The crawl is harvested and processed into fertilizer, which greatly increases crop yield and quality. The crawl may also be used as a food source for humans, and reliably so. But due to its unkindly appearance and taste, it has yet to reach cuisine standards. Yeah, I don't the think crawl ever. also plays a very important role in the next creatures that we have been studying. Sometimes, in a crawl populated environment, a node of meat may develop on one of the branches. This node will fall off and grow into a functioning organism, and go to live on as an independent animal. This leads us to the upcoming species that we will be discussing. The first of these creatures are, the trimmings. The trimmings? Oh, it's over. Okay. So, they have set the stage. Obviously, we haven't gotten into any real scares yet, but... Hey. On to the next video. The trimmings. Oh, it's a two-minute video. All right. The trimmings. Trimmings are small animals that resemble skinned raccoons. They are commonly known to have a plump body, round head, small eyes, nose and ear holes, and an agate Ew. mouth. They are also equipped with a diversity of limbs. All individual trimmings are unique, each with a different body shape, number of limbs, and other characteristics. What? There's One different... thing they all share in common is that they are made mostly of meat tissue, and are a maximum of 20 centimeters in length no larger than a basketball. Okay. Its life starts with its so separation from the, the damn crawl. Thing. That's good People enough. wonder to find anything that it. is edible and able to consume. Although it isn't omnivore, being able to hunt meat and forage for plant matter, trimmings are almost entirely scavengers. Their diet consists of rotting plants and meat, including, but not limited to, fruits, vegetables, roots, seeds, insects, and deceased animals. Uh. Although its appearance is unsightly, it is a cowardly creature, only fleeing, screeching, and hiding when threatened. Uh, okay. Because of its lack of defensive it's traits, it lies near the bottom of the food chain, making it easily uh -huh. overpowered and picked off very regularly by predators. Naturally, That's its nice. population would eventually die out, but this is not the case. The crawl constantly produces a large quantity of trimming nodes, keeping up their numbers. Naturally, trimmings can be found wherever there is abundant crawl. Trimmings grow at a decent pace, reaching maturity at around seven months, having a maximum lifespan of two to four years. Uh, okay. Although they are plentiful, humanity has no proper way to implement trimmings into society. Their overabundance has even considered them pests. Due to them digging through trash bins and making excessive noise at night. Ew. Besides all of this, some people still keep trimmings as pets and relatively domesticate them. Why? Nuisance or not, trimmings are a wondrous creature. From their plentiful numbers to their skittish nature, they are truly a thing to behold. That's not adorable. The next species on our list is the meat snake. The meat snake. Okay, so why are we keeping these things as pets? That's a question. On the next one. Meat snakes. The meat snake. The meat snake is a worm-like creature made of a variety of types of meat coated in a transparent skin-like membrane. Its size varies during its lifespan, depending what? on how much it consumes. When it first separates from the crawl, it is only a few centimeters in length. Huh. Eventually, 
it will reach an average length of 5 meters. Although, under extreme conditions, like natural disasters, war... How many feet? Uh-uh, that's too big. Although, Kill it under it's extreme big. conditions, like natural disasters, war, or plague, it can greatly surpass this length. Uh, the meat no, snake's diet consists entirely of dead animals or parts. Skin. A meat snake is incapable of consuming a healthy, living organism. The meat snake allocates its food by using a tongue-like organ covered in sensors to touch and feel its environment. The sensors catch particles of decaying meat, notifying the meat snake that there is food nearby. This process shares many similarities to regular snakes, hence the meat snake's name. Once it locates the corpse, the meat snake will open its jaw and swallow the entire body whole. Oh, no. Once the entire body is consumed, the meat snake's stomach will release a variety of chemicals. Some will break down soft tissue like skin, and the connection points between muscles. Others' chemicals will then ferment and preserve the tissue to keep it from breaking down for as long as possible. After that, the remaining flesh and bones will move along the meat snake's tract and slowly be implemented into its own structure, extending the meat snake. Does Unsatisfactory parts like skulls, pelvises, hair, and fingernails will be excreted. Speaking of oh. skulls, the meat snake will take the skull from the consumed organism and use it as its own. Each meat snake has its own skull, each corresponding what? to what that one has consumed. During its lifespan, it will swap or replace these skulls if needed. A meat snake's lifespan depends entirely on how much a meat snake consumes. The longest one has lived for was 28 years. Uh, uh, that's older the than me. The meat snake has no predators and is immune to disease due to its preserving chemicals. The only significant ways a meat snake can die is through starvation, burning, or complete destruction of the meat snake's membrane coating. Interestingly, the meat snake is the only member of the Carnies family that is able to reproduce. When that a meat thing snake is reaches an gigantic. excessive size, and is in the conditions to do so, it will commence mitosis, splitting itself in two, then the now two meat snakes will go on their separate ways and live on as two distinct organisms. Two? No. Meat snakes can only be found in moderate temperature climates, not too hot, not ah, too cold. Fuck. We're good, we're done. Their population depends entirely on the amount of corpses available. Where there is death, there are meat snakes. Humanity will use them to our advantage. Meat snakes are a very efficient and clean way of disposing of any meat products. The preserving fluid within the meat snake's body disinfects the carrion, preventing the spread of disease. Humans use meat snakes in butcher shops as a waste bin, dispose roadkill, within war on the battlefield to dispose of festering bodies and parts, and within zoos to dispose of deceased animals. They are extremely tame, not caring if any creature is around them, only acting defensively when it is within consuming a meal. This means they are very easy to tame. Overall, care. meat snakes are a marvelous creature with a very interesting way of sustaining itself. It is an amazing experience to encounter one, as long as you don't mind the smell. Our next creature is the milk. No. Oh, hell no. That's a person. Oh. Why are we letting these things walk? A mimic. Why are we letting these things live? The mimic. It's smiling. The mimic I don't like it. It's a bipedal it. creature with uncanny similarities to humanoid anatomy. They greatly resemble humans without skin with added exaggerated features. These features include extended finger length, longer limbs, bulging, empty eyes, and their most prominent feature, a wide, pea-filled smile. Although it resembles a happy face, this is due to coincidence and is only how their facial structure is shaped. The maw of the mimic contains much more teeth than humans, and their teeth is comprised almost entirely of incisors, with some canine and premolars the seven in the this is tooth composition is ideal for biting down onto meat and swallowing chucks whole. A mature mimic's diet is comprised entirely of human flesh. 
No, please. I don't like how the music stopped. Because of this, they are found solely around human populated areas. Of course, it's in Georgia. The mimic's life cycle is made of, of three stages. Of course, it's where I live. In the first stage, a young mimic separates from the crawl. They closely resemble their trimming relatives, but are thin, sleek, and only have four appendages. In this stage, the young mimic will hunt small animals, moving on to larger and larger as they grow. Once large enough, it will begin metamorphosis into the next stage of life. Once fully transformed, it will resemble the description mentioned in the beginning. Its hunting style changes and becomes much more complicated. It now stalks and feeds only on humans. Uh -uh. It will locate human populated area and begin its search for an easy target. To blend in, it may use objects to conceal itself. These include clothing, mannequins, and furniture. Once a target has, has been a found, brain. the mimic will observe its prey and learn its routine and when it is most vulnerable. This is typically when the human is asleep at night. Once the prey is within position, the mimic will advance silently until it is close enough. The mimic will then execute and immediately begin consumption. Once the mimic has had its fill, it will leave the scene, a fair distance away from the human population, and begin to digest its meal. Although, in the case that a human is awake, a mimic will use a variety of sounds to either lure or startle prey in the corner the themselves. Heard that right in my right ear. Hm. Fuck you. Once a human is in place, it will swiftly attack and kill the helpless target. What? What are we doing? Stop. Out the window. Uh-uh. 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 Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck off, man. The next stage that of the next cool. cycle has two potential morphs it may develop into. If a mimic has a consistent supply of food, it will develop more human-like features. It will grow skin, hair, and by the end will look nearly identical to a human being. No. It now can blend entirely into civilization, and lure other humans more effectively. No. The second type of morph happens when a mimic receives an overabundance of food. It will grow into a larger, more evolved hunter. Its proportions will increase in length and its humanoid features will fade away. It grows Elder a mimic anatomy. coating of a flexible skin, which is highly durable, and increases in strength the more the elder mimic consumes. This excludes the face, which is now coated in a pale pink skin. The mimic's teeth have also moved deeper into the mimic's throat, leaving its mouth a toothless grin. It uses the dark hue of its skin to hide seamlessly within a dark environment. Its skills have also been heightened. This makes an elder mimic one of the most efficient predators on the planet. No. Because of the obvious threat this poses on humanity, 
nations around the world have released instructions on how to be able to fend for yourself in a mimic encounter. Here are the instructions. Got it. One. Avoid going out alone if your location is known to have mimics, or there have been mimic sightings. Two. If you encounter a stationary mimic, seemingly unfazed by your presence, quietly leave the location and alert your local authorities. Three. If pursued by a mimic, get yourself into a position where you are able to flee. Mimics will rarely attack if a person has a clear escape route. 4. In the event that you have been cornered by a mimic, roll into the fetal position, protecting your neck, face, and vital organs from attack. Make as much noise as you can to alert any other people. 5. If you have a weapon, do not use it. A mimic is fairly resilient, and any strikes or shots on a mimic is not effective enough to bring it down in time. Instead, use it as a barrier between you and the mimic to block any attacks. Okay. Six. In a situation where a mimic is hunting in the immediate area, and is not aware of your position, hide somewhere low, like under a bed or behind other furniture. A mimic will not linger too long to search for prey, and will move on. That last Be one, Dave! And avoid any encounters with a mimic at all costs. Next up, the Harvester. Harvester. Oh, God. I don't like all the blood splattering on the wall. I hate that fucking thing. I hate it. The Harvester. The Harvester is a large, bulbous mass with a large amount of tendrils spreading from the base. The bulb measures around 3 meters in height and 2 meters in diameter. The tendrils, on the other hand, can extend up to 150 meters in diameter horizontally. The harvester is a specialized form of crawl that grows in a unique and deadly way. A harvester is created when a node that will grow into a harvester, instead of separating, continues to grow. Eventually, it will grow tendrils of its own. It uses the energy provided by its mother branch and expands its reach further, its tendrils, hidden just below the surface of the ground. The harvester is equipped with two types of specialized tendrils. The first type is bulky and flat. They lie the closest to the surface. These branches are no. lined on each length of the tendril with spines, uh. extending in the shape of a bear trap. On each side of the branch, those particular spines have a vein that feed into them, that pump two types of venom. On one side, the spines can inject a neurotoxin, which will attack the nervous system of whomever it is injected into, causing Please, sudden no. paralysis. The other side can inject an anticoagulant, which when injected, prevents blood cells from clotting. Whenever a large animal moves across the area armed with these tendrils, the branches will clamp onto the animal and thrash violently. Once the prey has been injected with both venoms, the tendrils will rest and the prey will immediately collapse. No. The animal will be unable to move due to the paralysis, and the wounds caused by the thrashing spines will not stop bleeding. All the prey can do is lie patiently, until succumbing to blood loss. Once the prey has bled out, the second type of tendrils come in. They lie below the spine equipped once. These branches no. are thick, but very sturdy. Please. They share similar anatomy to the small branches of the crawl, equipped with organelle that absorbs nutrients. These tendrils sense the blood, and move their way to the surface and begin to absorb the vital fluid. Once the blood has been consumed, the tendrils will wrap around the body and begin to shuffle downwards. This movement loosens the soil and slowly pull the body underground. Once secure, the tendrils will continue to feed until there is nothing but scraps. The nourishment absorbed by the tendrils will be sucked back into the main bulb of the harvester. This bulb houses all the vital organs and the venom glands that pump into the spines, 
The nutrients are then converted into usable mm -mm. energy. I don't like it. The remains underground decompose, providing a rich soil, causing very prominent plant growth, which then attracts more animals. A strange behavior the harvester displays is its choice of diet. The spines will only activate on larger animals, allowing smaller ones to pass by unaffected. The oh. spines will also not activate on some species of bird. There are a couple theories as to why this happens. One, it could be that attacking smaller animals would cost too much energy for what they get in return, making it not worth the time. Another, could be that smaller animals may attract larger animals or predators, allowing a safe place where prey may thrive, and lure more predators. It truly is uh, astonishing. Stop saying that, they kill people, Although they it kill is a us. spectacular creature, it is also very dangerous. The harvester exactly. is decently rare, only populating sparse areas in the northern hemisphere and woodland forests. It's barely in Georgia. If you are stunned by a harvester, there will be no way of helping you, being that there is no cure, and fatality is 100% positive. The best thing Mother you can do is avoid encountering a harvester me? in the first place. If you are hiking, take note of any warnings or signs saying that there are harvesters around. If you also notice an abundance of lush, ground-dwelling plants in a forested area, and there are no signs of wildlife, this is suspicious and you should leave the area, staying close to the base of large trees or rocks. If you find yourself in the middle of a harvester ground, do not panic. Sudden movements may activate the tendrils and will inject you. Although a harvester is rather forgiving, do not risk any skittish movements. Remain calm. If you have any objects with considerable heft, like coats, backpacks, or full water bottles, gently take that object and lightly toss it towards the bulb, and away from your escape route. This will activate the spines on where the object lands, distracting the bulb for a moment. You will then slowly begin to do wide shuffles away from the bulb. If possible, throw another object when you are certain you are a fair enough distance away, just to be safe. Continue okay. until you are completely sure you are out of harm's way. You may come out unscathed, but don't be too obnoxious, or you will be a harvester's next meal. Next up is... There's more? The, the what? Why does it have spikes on its back? I don't like how it had spikes on its back. The host of influence. The host of influence, more commonly referred to as the host, has its name derived from a host who invites guests to an event. Not to be confused with a host, a harborer of parasites or disease. The host is a semi-humanoid looking organism. It has the structure of a head, torso, and arms. Other than this, it shares no other characteristics. The lower half of the host Does is comprised of a mass of fibrous tissue and tendrils that burrow into the ground to hold the host in place. Instead of skin, the host is covered in muscular tissue fibers, tendons, and veins. In some parts of the body are covered in a meaty plate, used to cover any large exposed areas, but allowing movement. The host's head has a smooth surface where the face should be, attached to a crooked neck which houses a slit in the front used for feeding. On the host's back, is a mound of pores. Protruding from these pores are a hollow, hair-like structures, extending outwards. These hairs are barrels that release spores produced within host's body, by being fired into the air. These spores are hazardous, so keep clear of them at all costs. <laughs> Luckily, the host is rare, only found in North America, Obtaining info about the host is a very risky and daunting task. This is because of their rarity and of how dangerous it is to be up close to one. For anything that's gonna be able to protect us? Jesus! <laughs> the source released by a host is very dangerous when inhaled. A host will release a cloud of spores into the air, which will be what picked up by wind and carried great distance. protecting us? If an organism inhales the spores, the particles will find their way into the organism's brain and infect them. I got a bug. An infected organism will show no symptoms of infection right away, 
but a couple hours after infection the infected organism's behavior and thought process will change. The first symptoms that appear are restlessness, sluggish movement, numbness of joints, and lack of coordination. Then more serious symptoms appear over time. These include dizziness, migraines, oh no. impaired no, speech, you. and Please trembles. Stop. Stop. If you or someone you know show these symptoms, contact poison control or emergency services. After a total of six to seven hours after infection, the organism will cease all activities they were previously doing and begin to walk. The direction the infected will walk is towards the host whose spores have been inhaled by the infected individual. If the infected no. makes their way to the host, they will kneel down in front of it, expose their vital organs, and the host will promptly gut and remove those organs. No. The host will consume them and discard the leftover scraps. However, if an infected organism doesn't reach the host within a 36-hour span or is treated for their infection, the effects will wear off and return back to normal. Okay, so it's cured. If the host is unable to find prey or doesn't like its current location, it will unroot itself and move to a new location. Their scarce numbers and the hazard of being around one makes getting info about the host very daunting. All you need to currently know is that the host is extremely dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. Next, Why? the monoliths. The mon. Oh, he has a bottle cap head. His bottle cap head. I don't like it. The three minute. Please don't be. The monoliths. The monolith is a very new creature, only showing up in June of 1972, in the area of. Oh, there finally, it's not near me. All of them uh. located in a circular position, one and a half kilometers in diameter. This ring of monoliths surround. Why are we censoring? The monolith is a titanic sized being measuring roughly 120 meters in height. Each monolith has two trunk legs that are firmly embedded underground. The legs connect to a torso. The creature itself is made of hundreds of thousands of meaty strands, tightly woven together to form the structure. These strands end at the neck, fusing into a solid mass of hardened flesh in the shape of an upside-down triangle, with a hole in its center. On each side of the monolith where arms would be, there are dozens of long, rope-like appendages. These reach just barely to the ground. At the creature's feet, the strands go deep into the earth and extend horizontally a decent distance away. What the monoliths do is simply stand and do nothing. The only activity documented that the monoliths have done was in We're really censoring shit. During this period, they were extremely aggressive. When the group of were making their way to the city. The monolith that they had passes roared a deep bellow and the swung its appendages at the team, completely wiping them out. When military vehicles were dispatched, once they got close enough to the monolith, it roared another call, this time releasing an EMP blast, completely knocking the vehicles out in the vicinity. Finally, long distance rockets were fired and struck the creature. What happened? It regenerated at great speed, and resumed its stance unscathed. Eventually, the area has been fenced off and is now restricted to all. Ever since, the monolith stands silently. Now only a grand spectacle of awe and mystery, only adding more questions to these meat beings. And finally, the last creature on this list is... ...marvelous and majestic world that exists today. It's as extraordinary to have such What's strange last and one? mysterious beings appear all the around planet? us. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration no, and no, discovery we need of to the know lives the of these meat creatures.
What's the next one? Oh, it's a 32 minute -er. footage. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is just uh, the. Um... Singularity. What the hell? The singularity is the orb comprised of a dark colored man. This is just the compilation pack of all of them. The singularity is the last one. and majestic world that exists today it's as extraordinary okay so that's the end of that this one's a six this minute the greatest discovery of the age Baby. Let this feeling end. have any information of the whereabouts of no 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 Go back. Be making a dish that has recently gained a fair amount of popularity. Today's dish will be a cheesy crawl penne. To start off, these will be the ingredients you will need. Three cups of penne pasta. Okay. Roughly three cups worth of fresh crawl. Try to get a variety of sizes when you buy yours, or when you harvest them yourself. One cup oh of my cheese. God. Half a cup of green onion. One teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons of Cajun spice. Two tablespoons of parsley. One tablespoon of dill. One tablespoon of garlic. A pinch of pepper. And finally, the most crucial ingredient. Nutrier Company's newly released Flavor Enhancer. To bring out the richness of flavors within each and every meal. Okay. First, get a medium-sized pot and fill half of it with water. You're missing the whole thing. You can see it's missing the fucking pot. Sir. Add a pitch of salt, which is used to help the pot come to a boil faster and help flavor the pasta. Then, set aside to boil. Grab your crawl and a sharp knife. Begin to cut the meat into a rough mince. That doesn't look like it tastes good. Sir, you, you might need to stop. Please stop. Crawl is soft on the outside. But the interior has a surprising sturdiness. I like to breathe them. Then, gather the meat and set aside. Mince the green onion into rough segments.
take this mince and set aside as well. Next, grab your skillet and preheat with along some oil. Take your minced crawl and spread it evenly across the skillet. Stir occasionally until crisp and brown. As your water reaches a boil, add your penne and stir occasionally. The outline here? You ain't slick. <laughs> <laughs> Hot your ass. Cook until <laughs> soft. At this time, your crawl will be brown and crisp. Looks like Add shit. your mince green onion and then the spices. Mix well. Once your pasta is finished cooking, strain it. Pasta. Lay your cooked penne evenly into your dish. Now, why do you have a gas mask on? Then add Some the should know. topping. I get off. Ha. Sprinkle a generous amount of cheese along the still warm crawl for it to melt. At this point, finish preparing the dish with your flavor enhancer, but allow your dish to cool to a temperature below 60 degrees Celsius. Well, I'm or with else the guitar. The enhancer will not work. And now, you may serve and enjoy. That it? How much are you looking at? Ah, uh, that's it. Now, why are we doing that? Many people trimming get pets for companionship. Guide to owning a pet trimming. They form bonds and grow relationships with these animals, even to the point of them being considered a part of the family. Most people get dogs or cats, but maybe you want something more interesting. Then, you may want to get yourself a trimming. These lumps of meat have grown a reputation to be a loving companion for many people in the recent months. Although, most people may not know the proper ways to care for them. Today, we will be showing you how you can care for your pet trimming. Taking oh my care God, of the trimming is fairly easy, but this is no reason to slack off. They are living things and do require maintenance. The first thing to keep in mind when keeping a trimming is the temperature of your home. Oh. While trimmings are resilient to both high and low conditions, you want to keep your base temperature near room temp, maybe slightly cooler. That being said, trimmings prefer warmer areas to nest. A simple setup you may use is a box with some blankets on the inside. Make sure there is enough for your trimming to cover itself. And now, you have uh -huh. a comfy bed for your buddy. Next, you want to give your trimming the best diet possible. Trimmings are not picky eaters, and will eat anything you give them. To keep your trimming healthy and strong, a diet of dry cat or dog food that is high in protein, provided two times a day, is best. As a treat, you may give your trimming any scraps of your food. Things like apple cores, banana peels, or eggshells are a perfect snack. A thing mm, to Angelica. remember is trimmings are nocturnal and make plenty of noise.
prevent you from having sleepless nights, try to give your trimmings first meal in the late morning or afternoon. This helps them be active during these times instead. Another thing to consider if you want a pet trimming is where they will be living. Your home should have enough Blair. space for your trimming to roam around, as well as access to the outdoors, like a backyard. If not, be Looks sure like a to take your trimmings on regular walks. This gives your trimming the exercise they need, as well as allowing them to meet other trimmings. Trimmings are a social creature and need to interact with others of their kind, like how they do in the wild. When it comes to entertainment, trimmings are not the most active and aren't the best at fetch or tug of war. But here are other ways to keep your trimming entertained. Some toys that trimmings like are little items they can push, around, pull, or carry. Trimmings also enjoy things that you enjoy as well. Like watching the television or listening to the radio. They love seeing and listening to all the funny things coming from the devices. After a long day, your trimming might be dirty and need a wash. To clean them, start right. the bath with a gentle warm water mixed with a bit of hand or body wash. Gently scrub the trimming's feet, armpits, belly, and neck fold. Remember to be careful around their face and avoid getting soap in their eyes, nose, and mouth. Gently pat dry with a towel when done. Now your buddy is all clean. Oh, it's so peaceful. And lastly, now I want one. As said before, trimmings are social creatures, so be sure to give them plenty of affection. They love receiving pats, scratches, and pets. They also love to sit with you and cuddle. Since they communicate with each other in the wild, it is best to replicate this behavior with them as well. Simply talking to them is plenty enough. You can talk about your day, if anything interesting happened at work, if you are working on any new recipes, or talk about the weather. Trimmings are very good listeners and love to be oh. involved. It gives advice! With all of these in mind, you are now well equipped to have a trimming become a part of the family. Do things right, and you will have a companion for a long while. Oh. Okay. Are they here writing? Okay. Wait. Next. Three minute. -er. Meet snake specimen archived footage. In the year of 1945, with the war finally ended, the cleanup process had started. During routine sweep of an underground train tunnel, the cleanup crew made a grotesque discovery. Found completely filling the tunnel was a meaty wall, and in the center of the mass was an opening with several skulls surrounding it. Closer inspection of the blockage revealed that the mass was actually an extremely engorged meat snake. Ew. Its impeccable size had blocked off the entirety of the tunnel's path. There was many strange things with this creature. First was the coloration. A typical meat snake's color is bright reds and light browns. This particular meat snake was a very deep maroon. Another strange thing about it was its behavior. This creature barely moved. Meat snakes are normally sluggish and encumbersome, but the specimen discovered seemed to lack even basic motor functions. Its behavior was that of a plant's. 
stationary, with only minor movements within. One would assume it was dead. The reason the meat snake may act this way may be because it was completely lodged in place and minimized movements to conserve energy. But how would it have gotten this deep into the tunnel in the first place? Yeah. And by the looks of weathering, it had been in there for quite some time. So how did it get so large? The answer was discovered by a different cleaning crew, who found the other Ow. end of the tunnel. They followed it until it met with the other end of the meat snake. Alongside it was a huge pile of car corpses. This yeah. meat snake's skin also displayed great amounts of resilience. It took several days of cutting to even obtain a sample. Here, you can see the clear difference between this meat snake specimen versus a normal meat snake's membrane. Testing on the sample showed that it had great immunity to damage. It tolerated extreme freezing temperatures, extreme heat temperatures, and even high doses of radiation. It is a wonder how such durability can occur in an organic creature. Another strange phenomenon is the smell off the skin. Normally, it would have a sour smell of rotting flesh. But the specimen displayed a rather pleasant smell, like that of cooking scrambled eggs. The meat snake was later discovered to be missing by unknown surveyors. How the meat snake grew in size was discovered to be... Damn it. Oh, is it over? Oh God, does it have to ring in my ear? Jesus. As of the time of this video's release, we have been facing a concerning October increase of missing 24, persons and fatalities on a global scale. The reason for this is because we are under attack. We have discovered that there has been a significant growth of mimic populations, which is threatening public safety. National leaders have released this instructional recording to teach you on how to defend yourself. Here is what you need to know about the threat. Mimics are humanoid, intelligent predators that are highly adaptive and feed solely on human prey. Mimics gain information on people by watching their daily lives and pick to hunt people when they are most vulnerable. The most common times a mimic will attack is when you are asleep, that walking alone, or in a cornered position. Mimics are cautious and calculative creatures, taking precautions to ensure a successful hunt. They utilize various tactics to capture a person by surprise. One of the more well-known tactics is hiding itself inside of furniture to blend into its environment. Common objects that mimics can hide inside are sofas, recliners, wardrobes, no, no. and other Please. places a mimic can comfortably wait. Mimics are able to contort their body in ways that allow them to fit inside smaller places. They also use it to expand their body, making themselves appear larger for intimidation. Another method mimics use to blend in is their ability to put on and wear clothing. Mimics put on layers of shirts, pants, and jackets to hide their bright red skin and blend into densely populated areas. In very rare cases, mimics can develop and grow to look very similar to human beings. Pairing this with clothing, it can be very hard to tell the difference between a mimic and a person right away. No. If you are unsure if a person is a mimic, look out for key features that may reveal their true form. Oh, great, they're alternates. Look for abnormal <laughs> facial features. They're alternates. Like large, bulbous eyes, flat noses, wide mouths in an uncanny smile, and clammy skin. Also pay attention to other exposed body parts like hands. Mimic people will have long fingers with no fingernails. 
If you are unable to see their face or hands, watch their walking pattern. Mimic's legs are long and hunched. Their walking will be unusual and irregular. Here is what yeah. you do if you are met with a mimic. If it stands before you, do not panic. Stand your ground and try to appear larger. Wave your hands and make plenty of noise. Maintain eye contact. A mimic will hesitate to attack a potential threat. If you are armed with the weapon, aim for the head or legs. Okay. These are the best areas to hit to immobilize the threat. Fight back and don't let it get a hold on you. If you find a mimic that hasn't discovered you yet, stay out of sight. Call the authorities and alert them of your location. Stay where you are to avoid startling the mimic. If the mimic gives chase, run. Try to get somewhere out of sight and hide. Do not leave the area. Officials will need to locate you to help. Stay low and stay quiet. With the information you have learned, use it well and stay safe. Yeah, basically be a big boy. Oh, God. Evidence tape. Yep, it's working. Hey, can we get a move on? Uh, one sec. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hello. I thought you only had 30 minutes of tape on that. I know, but I gotta see how it works. Like, yeah, well, I never got to use one of these. Nice. <laughs> it's, too, it's too bad. You were the only person who could film with me, so you're gonna have to put up with it. Fine. Yeah. Screw you. Screw you. Screw you. It's still way too dark. One sec. There we go. Yeah. Hello. Stay together. <laughs> Cold. Yeah. Oh, there we go. We got, we got some light now. Oh, look at that over there. You can't see anything unless I like point directly over there. Like, nope, can't see nothing. Are you sure we should be out this late? Fine. No. I'll cook you stuff when we get home. Don't worry. I'm hungry. Too bad. Walking. You just walking. Come on, bud. No. Can't be that bad. Pretty dark to see. 
but it was just one guy. I I don't know why. Like, why would they get rid of everything? Dogs barking are never a good sign. No. Barely capture the ground in front of me. Please. What is this, some kind of fucking Blair Witch shit? So, what are we doing out here exactly? Well, supposedly they found some guy. Like, it was like, it was like a grody scene. Like, it was disgusting. Like, they, mm. like, they had to get rid of the trailer he was in, and then, like, they didn't let anyone nearby, and it was like this big conspiracy. So, you know, I'm filming that. Hopefully, I get a good mark for it. There we go, we're getting close. Close to what? Yeah? Come on. It's not too late yet. Hungry. Never too late. You said that already. Yeah. I'm still hungry. <sighs> okay. Almost there. Right. It'll be it'll, it'll be like five minutes. Five minutes, okay? We're on the road. We're almost there. We just got past the tree line. And make the way to the trailer park. We can do it! Then we can go home. Okay? Okay. I don't want to be out here either. It's a weird place. See, we're right here. No, you go ahead. I can't, you can't see a thing. Where am I even going? Uh, just up here. There should be a path. Got it? Right there, yeah. Right here. See, I found the path. We're all good. Just walking. I'll have a watch on.
This way. What way? I think this way. No. Yo, look at this. I didn't see this on my way over here last time. What? It's cool. Like we, what, a we door? Can, we can get a shot of this in like atmosphere, you know? It's it just atmosphere. Like <laughs> uh, Boy, you deserve to die. Come on now. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's cool. Hey, look, it's like old stuff here as well. I get it. Dying's cool, apparently. Don't point at their eyes. Oh, yeah, just black out their face. Bag. Just. Oh, damn, you don't have to roast, my guy. Guess how long have they been going? <laughs> All right, give me a second. This is the most slow paced episode. Confidential. Teenage boy was coming home from the trailer one late night. Although, when he arrived at home, he found a grizzly teen. Detail Barrar, his father that he came home to, was found dead. The grizzly teen lied before him. Police were called and came to investigate. Strange thing, though, they immediately closed off everything. Really? What truly happened? And that's it for now. You said grizzly way too much. What? <laughs> you said grizzly way too much. Too much? Yeah. Okay. Too much grizzly. Back? Too uh, much of the grizzle. Sure. Okay. It caused. That one turned out all right, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, why is it rolling? Did you catch that? Oh. Thirty minutes of filming yet. I needed someone to film. Alright. No hard feelings, okay? Okay. Yeah, don't film it ever again. It's pretty scary out here. I know. I understand. Yeah, because, like, back there was the perfect time for a serial killer to just jump out and grab us, you know? Cut it out. Scary enough as is. Wow. 
happened? Who are you? Chris! Come uh -oh. on! Uh-oh. This isn't funny! Chris! I just want to go home, come on! Fine, I guess I'm going home without you. I'm cold, tired, and hungry. If you want to stay out here and play games, you can. Oh, the mimic's coming. Is this where the mimic comes? I know it's coming. Come on. Bring it, motherfucker. Nope. This video is all about mimics. Mimics coming. Chris got killed by a mimic. Just panning up to the mimic just on top of the fucker. Don't trip. He did not just trick. <laughs> oh, it's trying to get in the house. I thought that one was going to scare me a bit more, but it didn't. Okay, thank Christ. Uh, I gotta go pee. And when I come back, we'll be looking at the species. What is this one called? The Species Anomaly Report. Harvester. No population density shift discovered between August 1st, 1989 and October 1st, 1989. All right, 1989. Hey, at least not 1987. Oh my. Now, how many are ours? Is that just a blood splatter? Nice Photoshop. <laughs> Ooh. 
I don't like those beats going to my ears. paralyzed because it went on its and killed September 1st October 1st King camming the skull. Oh, the mob. Uh, poor father and other son. Flavor enhancer. Flavor. Three minutes. The most crucial component to enjoying a good meal. The way food tastes is what makes eating so pleasurable. But what if you could savor every little detail you could possibly want? That is why we at Nutrier Co. have made it so that you may enjoy every single bite you take. With our product, the Flavor Enhancer, you can extract every last morsel of taste from your plate. With overwhelming demand for this essential product, even since our start earlier this year, we have delivered what you wanted. Now introducing the Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Now packaged in a larger size and modified recipe, there is now even more savory goodness to go around. Since our debut in mid-1990, the Flavor Enhancer has shown to be a major hit, with our product flying off the shelves. The yeah. Flavor Enhancer Deluxe will allow us to satisfy your growing, tasting needs. Now allowing you to add even more enhancer to your dinner, making your food even better to enjoy. The Flavor Enhancer Deluxe, available on shelves now. New Trier Co. Experience True Savor. Hey. Was I supposed to see something there? Make dining even more pleasant, now allowing more generous amounts of enhancer at a time. Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Now available in stores near you. Deluxe! Yummy! Experience <laughs> truth. Save. Make your taste buds pop with the new deluxe size. Okay. Tasting even more awesome. Bye now. Slow your 
your kids with this essential part of every meal. Why does it keep going to a blank table? Flavor and answer deluxe. Required for all meals, no matter how small it seems, just a little more. It is crucial to everyday eating. Oh, I get it now. You need the flavor and answer choice. Becoming an obsession. You need the flavor and answer choice. You need the flavor and answer choice. This one's weird. That's getting a bit too loud. All right. Next tape undiscovered document. It's a two minute. Why are people obsessed with the fucking flavor enhancer? Confidential ones, not released to the public. All right. This will hopefully explain it. Why are there ants? Scandal. It's facing charges after numerous reports of sickness after consuming their product flavor enhancer. Only statement made from the company so far are dismissing any issues at the product it, and that their product is safe to consume. Okay. Sure I know him. Why do you keep looking at ants? Is that? Uh oh, that we don't want to look at. Don't let those pheromones get to you. The fuck? What is that? We're inside a brain? Their skull and shit? Organization of Containment Research. Uh, okay. New log. Message to Arcus. Vina Carnus, message. Okay. In the distant horizon. The group of monoliths stand vacant. Although closed off to outsiders, their stance can be observed well outside the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have bottle, bottle openers for heads. It is known to have hundreds of thousands of fibers that weave themselves deep underground, all connected in a grand mycelial network. You might be confused as to why you received this package. Them. Why is nothing being done? Because 
they don't want us to know. We've been kept in the dark while those above us slither and miss the blind. They have slowly been building our minds. Frontal load games, deterioration. But they've made one crucial error. Trails, crimes, traces of information. I've collected these pieces and found their loose ends. This is why I've left this message to you. The document's included with this tablet is all the information that I have gathered. Every continuity, every cover, every crumb that I could find, they all lead here. Really? Something has been going on these few years. Something big. Something they don't want us to know about. Here's where you come in. I don't have the power to change things, but you do. Alongside the documents are plans. Cult gathering. Oh, it's a cult. Okay. Oh, that that fucking flavoring was a fucking cult thing. Okay. That explains shit. The monoliths are truly an astonishing sight to behold. Until they kill you. Your name there, bud. Huh. We're watching. Yeah. Facility Zero. Oh, this is an eight minute Carcass. Mission brief. Three ground teams are tasked with infiltrating a previously abandoned mall, titled Facility Zero. Which is located in the restricted zone based on our info. The mission will take place in three stages. Infiltration, encirclement, and ambush. Primary objective is to capture the facility and seize the items of interest for extraction. Numerous armed guards are located within the facility. Avoid detection and keep up your guard. Alpha team, in position. Beta team, in position. Gamma team, in position. Copy. Beginning phase one. Are we about to go after the cult? Eyes on the point. Clear your pathway now. Pathway cleared. Give us the green light. Copy. Green light is a go. Begin phase two in advance. This will probably be like the last one because the next one's supposed to be a, se a teaser to the season two. What is that? Rescue mission.
burning. Keep your distance. Might you send three? Single file. Send more. Send at least 400. Halt. In position, awaiting green light. Green light is a go. Begin phase two in advance. Surround it. there I uh, know someone's there I saw that team dead Why are people dead were they uh, part of the cult or alpha team in position we are experiencing mechanical interference should we resume copy phase three is still a go preparing for breach okay okay you guys have been killing them okay good breach in three two, two. one oh. breach Oh, you have four. Could check the teaser. Vita Carnus. Season one finale. Yeah. All right. We're not going to watch the season two treat teaser because, oh boy. So that was Vita Carnus. Shocking enough, I thought I was going to scream way more than I did. I'm glad I didn't save my voice. No. So yeah, Vita Carnus. A it was good. I I had some enjoyment out of it, but what took me out of it was 
the reveal of a cult and some slow pacing from another the second mimic encounter we saw the slow pacing kind of took me out of it i mean so yeah anyway season two is coming soon can't wait to do that what i might do is either i'll watch it on my own time or i'll wait till season two wraps up and then I'll come back to Vita Carnus. So, thank you for joining me here today, guys. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe for more. Make sure you check out Vita Carnus as well. So, see you guys in the next video. See ya!